Salem Aerial. For aerial photos, videos, mapping and inspections, visit SalemAerial.com. Um, you represent uh, Lindsay? I represent Lindsay Graham, correct. Okay. Um, you know, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't really know what to ask here, but if okay. you just kind of, whatever you can tell the public, fill us in on her case mm -hmm. and, you know, what's been happening and maybe a little bit about what your thoughts are. Well, okay, so her case really involves, uh, there are several aspects to it. There's the uh, OSHA complaint, which um, it, it was uh, instigated when she announced back on May 3rd that she was going to open and start seeing clients. And OSHA came in and, and uh, you know, threatened her, and which kind of led to a lot of the, the public attention to, to her case. Uh, OSHA has uh, fined her $14,000, or I should say they're proposing a fine of $14,000. I'm not ha representing her on that. She's hired an attorney who specifically does, um, who does that kind of uh, work. His name's George Goodman out of Newburgh or McMinnville, I can't, McMinnville, I think. He's a great lawyer. He's doing a great job. Don't think OSHA has jurisdiction over this, but we'll, you know, that's, that's a fight that they're going to fight uh, in an administrative proceeding. I represent Lindsay on the other issues that relate to her, the, the forced closing of her salon, uh, as well as, you know, the, the, everything from what the city of Salem tried to do in terms of threatening her with her lease to um, uh, the, the Oregon Health Licensing Board uh, when they, uh, they threatened her with, uh, you know, revoking her license, uh, as well as, you know, the uh, atrocious uh, sending Child Protective Services out to her, her, uh, her home, which I'm still just floored by. I can't, I can't believe it. So those are the things that I'm representing her on right now. This uh, Child Protective Services thing or DHS thing, um, this seems to be really what um, grabbed the, the national public's attention. Um, you know, she was getting a lot of local attention just for opening up, but then when she announced that, what are your thoughts about that? It's, uh, it's inhumane, it's unreal. Um, the idea that the governor would allow Child Protective Services to come and, I mean, it's harassment. It's, I mean, it's bullying. It's, you know, the, the, the governor should have instantly spoken out about, um, you know, against it and should have said, this is crazy. I'm putting a stop to it period and for for her to allow this to happen it, it's just it's it's unbelievable to me and it's I get it it's one thing if people want to protest and 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 the state wants to flex its muscle and and threaten her you know her business and her livelihood I, I still think that's unconscionable but sending child protective services to her house especially when they know she's not there, uh, is a whole new low in Oregon. I mean, it is really, really unbelievable. And I, I, it's scary to think that, I mean, they're clearly sending a message to her. If you don't do what we tell you to do, we're going to try to take away your kids. And that, to me, should have every Oregonian just livid. Um, that particular department has had a lot of controversy over the last at least 20 years. Um, considering all of that controversy, how does it strike you that they would go ahead and do something like this? So, so something that, that appears so blatantly to be harassment. Well, I, I mean, so... I've, I've had a couple of cases involving Child Protective Services and essentially what judges will tell you is that these guys are the experts and we're not going to, we're not going to second guess them for the most part. So they get a rubber stamp from, from, from judges. And I think Child Protective Services knows that. 
And they know that when you go into court challenging their authority or challenging a decision of theirs, that Child Protective Services is probably going to win 90% of the time, if not more. And so the fact that the, the, the governor sent in an agency that has such a high batting average in court uh, tells me that they were trying to send a very strong message to Lindsay that she better do what they say, quit causing a problem, otherwise, you know, her family's at stake. Uh, you know, she, Lindsay made it very clear in her announcement uh, when she, that she was going to open that she was doing this to protect her family. So she told the governor, she told the, bureau, the bureaucrats and the bureaucracy what was important to her. And so they went after what they knew was important to her, which was her family. Um, the, let's switch gears to the governor's order. Um, it seems like that order, and I read through the statutes, but again, I'm not a lawyer. Um, that order expired 28, 28 days after she issued it, is that correct? Well, I, I think there's a good argument for that, sure. Um, the governor was smart in that she, her orders uh, are very, um, they're not very clear on the authority upon which she was relying to issue those orders. So she just basically issued orders and, um, and let her lawyer, she's a lawyer too, but let her lawyers decide what the basis are. And they used both the two different chapters in the Oregon Revised Statutes as the basis for her orders. So, And one of them does have a 28-day limit and the other one doesn't? Yes, that is correct. And so the question then becomes, what did she, you know, where did she, you know, under what authority did she issue this order? And, you know, she, she used both so she could talk out of both sides of her mouth and give her as much wiggle room as possible, which I hope the courts don't allow her to, to, to do, but my su suspicion is that the Oregon Supreme Court will probably let her get away with it. Um, if the uh, Supreme Court does let her get away with it, what do you foresee in our future as Oregonians? Well, I, I mean, I think what it would mean for Oregonians is that the governor can shut down the economy anytime the governor thinks that there's a, a reason to do it. Um, now, I, I'm not going to go so far as to say that the governor, any governor, whether it's this governor or a future governor, is going to shut down an economy, the economy just because. But what it means is that if the governor, you know, I'll give you an example. You know, this is just one of the many parades of horribles. What if, um, you know, there's an area, say, northeastern Oregon is having a water problem. You know, Pendleton, Umatilla County had a, 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 a critical, was declared a critical groundwater area. Well, the governor, in theory, uh, could use this precedence as um, a basis for shutting down businesses in northeastern Oregon, which just happens to be an area of Oregon that doesn't, as a general rule, vote for her. Uh, so, you know, I think the Supreme Court should be taking those things into account, that this is, this is a tool that they could be giving her that could be wielded in a way that could really cause harm to people who aren't supporting the governor or, or the governor's party. That's a, that's a big concern of mine. Okay. Um... At, at the point we're at right now, how do you think um, Lindsay's um, outlook is as far as, is she on solid ground, do you think? Well, I think so. Um, I mean, we haven't filed a lawsuit yet, um, and I'm still in the process of drafting it. We've sent out our tort claim notice, which is required by Oregon law, uh, and we've outlined what we think some of our claims are going to be. But, I, you know, I wouldn't sign a pleading if I didn't think there was a good faith basis for it. And I think she's got a very strong case against the governor, or against, I should say, against the state of Oregon. Uh, there's an actual statute that says that she's entitled to compensation for any property, that personal or real property that was taken. Well, I think she's got a pretty good case 
that that her personal property was taken. Her right to operate her business is a property right, and that was taken from her. And so I think, um, you know, that basis and and some of the other constitutional bases are, are, are good bases to 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 bring claims against her against the state. Okay, um, switching back to the to the DHS thing. In the state of Oregon, if DHS does some kind of thing like they've done to Lindsay, um, what recourses against that agency does a does a, a citizen of Oregon have? Can can we sue that agency? You can sue. I mean, one of the things people always ask me, well, I want to sue. Can I sue? And I always tell them, you can sue. The question is, are you going to win? Are you going to be successful? And you know, I think she has. You know, there's a lot of latitude. Uh, it's called immunity that's, that the courts have given um, bureaucrats, especially in the context of child welfare, child safety checks, those sorts of things. So it's got to be based. It's got to be a good faith basis for um, uh, for the the you know the child welfare check or the instigation of the of the investigation. So the question is whether or not what the uh, you know the state did in terms of its investigation and initiating the investigation was done in good faith. I don't believe it was. Um, I have access to certain facts. I don't want to get too deeply into it. Yeah, we don't want you to. Yeah, but to I hurt anything. Yeah, but I, I I based on what I know, I don't believe. The investigation was initiated in good faith by the state, and and it's concerning to me, not just as an attorney, but as a parent, that that the state of Oregon is willing to wield its considerable power in this way to shut people up. Um, Lindsay spoke about the way that the DHS thing got started was that there was an anonymous complaint, um, but. Do you think that this started at a higher level in the government? I've been suing the government for the better part of my 20-year career as a lawyer. <clears throat> One thing I've learned is that there's no such thing as coincidence when it comes to the government. So I find it hard to believe that after all of the media attention that Lindsey Graham received positive and negative, that first week of May, I find it hard to believe that somebody other than, uh-oh, is there somebody behind me? Yeah, don't you just keep going, don't oh. worry about it. I find it hard to believe that somebody higher up did not know that, that A, this complaint was received, B, who it was, and C, they had to clear it with somebody higher up in order to do it because otherwise they, you know, it, 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 uh, otherwise somebody did something really stupid. Okay. Um, before we wrap it up, what would you add? Don't really have a lot other than, you know, we really appreciate the support of everybody, uh, the public, uh, you know, it's been 10 to one positive easily. I mean, of course there's always people out there who, who are going to, do and say stupid things, um, but I know that the support from the public has just been overwhelming, and we really appreciate it. And you know, again, if anybody has any information, if they can reach out and contact us and let us know, that would be great because every little bit helps. Uh, if somebody does want to contact you to help out a little bit, what's the best way to do? The that? best way to do it is to give us a phone call at my office, which is 503-747-2705, or they can send me an email at ross at daylawpc.com. Okay. So, well, Ross, we thank you for your time. My pleasure. I appreciate it. At Western Pacific Roofing, our residential team can provide all of your roofing needs, 503 588 7663